Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com, another great presentation. We've been doing a series of lectures on antibiotics. Now it's another topic. Um, I'm going to again, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Pramil Chariat. I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and residents on a regular basis, also an associate professor of medicine to a large medical school. So right? now let's go back to our topic, antibiotic again. Today we're going to look what let's say we got a patient in the outpatient setting, right? Got a urinary tract infection. What happens? You do some blood work, you find out the patient have urinary tract infection, they're symptomatic, maybe a little bit of elevation in the white blood cell uh, <clears throat> count. And uh, usually what they do, we just uh, prescribe oral antibiotic, take the antibiotic, you get better, you forget about it, right? Let's say if you're admitting a patient in the hospital, is having fever, is tachycardia, systematic inflammatory response syndrome, and the WBC is elevated. What do you do? You start the patient on antibiotic. Before you start the patient on antibiotic, we do culture and sensitivity, right? It could be blood, it could be the wound, it could be urine, anywhere there is a fluid. You take the fluid and send it out. You hear the term, let's do culture and sensitivity. For easy, let's take the blood. So we drew blood, mainly like two places, and then we send it to the lab for culture and sensitivity. So when it, what happens in the culture? You get the culture results, and they will say something like, okay, we identified gram positive, then or gram negative. And then one day later or two days later, they identify the organism. They will say staph aureus, or they may say <clears throat> streptococcus. They may say... Um, you know, E. coli. So you will get that report, right? And then it may take a few, a couple of days or one day later, let's, once you get the cultural identification, we look at the sensitivity. We need to know which antibiotic is going to work on them. That's what we're trying to find out. That's why this thing comes to play, okay? Two terms we need now. We'll start with the EMIC. The term is the minimum inhibitory concentration, okay? MIC, remember that. There's another term. Uh, I mean, let's be real. This is called MBC, which is the minimum bactericidal concentration, okay? And now let's define what MIC is. Is the minimum concentration of antibiotic that prevent bacterial growth, okay? Very, very important. You need to know when you're a patient in the hospital, you need to know that. So that is a minimum concentration of antibiotic that prevent bacterial bacterial growth. Now, let's look at the second term, which is MBC, which is a minimum bactericidal concentration. So that what is MBC? Ma minimum concentration of antibiotic that kills the bacteria. Okay, that is bactericidal, is killing the bacteria. Now, so you send the results to the lab, you get a chart, come back and say like, oh wow, they put like a lot of antibiotic up here, you put the antibiotic name, and you got MIC, minimum inhibitory concentration, there's an interpretation, S, R, S, I, things like that. We'll come back to that. This is what we need to know. How do you interpret that? How, why is it important to us, right? We need to, we need to take, um, we need to identify the bacteria and we need to find out what's the specific drug could destroy that organism, right? That's where this comes into play. So before we get into that, there's a couple of terms we need to know. The first thing we need to do is like get like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We get eight test tubes, okay? And then you put the drug in dilutions in there. Right, you look at the dilution 0 0.0.12, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 4. All these are dilutions, and then you put the same amount of bacteria in each one of them. You depose it. Okay, see what happens at 0 0.5, you inhibit the bacterial growth. So that is the minimum, um, that is the minimum concentration of antibiotic that prevents the bacterial growth. So it is inhibited. Okay, then so there is something called a break point. Anytime if you use anything about, let's look at the definition first. What is a break point? Highest plasma concentration of drug that can safely be, look at the word, safely. That's what I want you to remember. Safely be achieved in a patient to define susceptibility of an organism. Okay, so you have to be careful. This is all inhibit the growth. Okay. When you come up here, more than like three is the break point here. If you use more than 
and this concentration that be like a lot of complication to patient you can have side effects uh, you don't want to do that now we have to look at some of the terms we using we have to know one is called susceptibility so first thing you will see s right here okay s equals to s you can use it susceptible what is susceptible mic less than the break point so mic is right here and this break point is over here so what is the mic is less than the break point so you can go ahead and use it save okay now the next thing is the intermediate mic approaching at the break point the mic come up here you know 0 0.5 did not inhibit the growth one in not did not inhibit the growth two did not inhibit the growth up here it comes an inhibitor so what happened your mic is equals to break point that is called intermediate okay in that case it may be or may not be effective but it, may, it can be effective if you use a better like i mean a bigger dose okay now the, remember the last one is the resistant r don't use it okay because it's not going to work what does that mean mic greater than the break point what is the mic is going to be mic is going to be keep on going the break point is right here mic don't use in that circumstance so it resists and it's not going to work okay so you got this s r s one s i mean i intermediate susceptible resistant susceptible intermediate susceptible 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 okay so you can use this drug this drug this drug uh, you can use astrionam you can use cefepim you can use dendamycin you can use meropenem you can use zosin or piperacin dasobactron all these have like susceptible okay when you use ciprofloxacin, it's the intermediate. That means MIC equal to the break point. Okay, you may need a, be I mean, a bigger dose. Now, where do you get this break point? Like, how do you get the numbers? You know, the break point over is three, right? How do you know that? Um, you can Google search it. The lab, it's a specific uh, lab set value. It's kind of remains constant. So astriona may be like four, uh, ciprofloxacin be two or three. You can just Google search it, you can find it, okay? The first thing you wanted to do, if you want to really go into it, let's say, do, I mean, what you need to do, find the break point. Now, if a drug is a break point, is a, let's say the break point 88 and MIC is over here, that's a safe drug, okay? So dilutions below the break point. So the more distance from the break point and the MIC, that's good, okay? That give you a lot of safety. Um, I mean, you know, you feel safe about using that drug. Let's say MIC is right here and the break point is right here. There's only a little bit distance between that. You have to be careful because you have a tiny window before you go into safety complications, okay? So dilutions below the break point, we just have to kind of look at it. Now, you got two, you got three drugs over here. You got so I mean, you got meropenem, you got gentamicin, you got astronom, all these are susceptible. So what's the best way you can see like that? Don't compare the MIC. Don't look at the MIC, say, just use that drug. MIC, no, do not. The mistake people make is like, don't compare MIC. Get it out of your brain. What you have to do is look at the break point and compare it to MIC. Okay, so you Google search it, find out the break point. Let's say meropenem. Let's compare meropenem and gentamicin. Okay, so meropenem is 0 0.5 up here, right? Then I look at the break point. If the break point is 2 for meropenem, and <clears throat> then if you take gentamicin, okay, and the break point gentamicin may be like 16, there's a big difference between MIC and the break point, then I take the drug, okay? Then I take the gentamicin, okay? So that's what important. You have to look at the break point, and the wider the window from break point to MIC, that is good for you to use. Don't compare it, otherwise people make the mistake all the time. They compare the MIC, do not do that, okay? Look at the break point and look at the MIC, the further you, you are away from the MIC, from the breakpoint, that gives you like a lot of safety profile. It's a good drug to use. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. God bless. Please subscribe to our channel.